Hey everyone, welcome back to the vlog. For this vlog, I kind of just wanted to take a look at my AMCAS application because I know that's something that I would have loved to look at when I was going through. And I think today was the first day that you could submit them. So I just wanted to take a minute to go through mine and what I did and just show you all the tips that I got along the journey. I know after I applied, I called UMMC actually and they went through every part of my application with me and told me what I could improve and what I did well. So I kind of just wanted to share that knowledge with you before you submit it. Okay, so when you first get onto the AAMC website, this is what your AMCAS application will look like. So the first thing you'll see here is all of your open applications or any of the cycles that you can currently apply for. So right now you can apply for the 2023 cycle or the 2022 cycle. However, you will want to be applying for the 2023 cycle since that is the year that you will be starting medical school. You can also see all of your past applications. So I applied in the 2021 cycle and you can print those applications in order to refer back to them. So the first step is to either press start an application or continue your application depending where you are. And so once you press that, you will pop up to this screen, which on the left, you will see your identifying information, which has your AAMC ID, your gender, date of birth, country of birth, email, birth state, and birth city. So all of this information is very important in your application and you need to make sure that it is accurate, especially your email, since this is how AAMC will contact you and how any medical schools will contact you regarding interviews or um, questions about your application. So make sure that you have access to that email. On the right right here, you can see where you are in your application. So all of these sections are the order that you must do the application in. And if it says complete, that means you've completed every box that you have to complete and incomplete obviously means you have not. You do have to go in this order, but you can go back to any section that you have completed. This is very helpful to show you where you are in your application. Down here on the left is just some quick links that'll help you if you have any questions. And then down here on the right is something that I found extremely helpful, especially since I went to multiple schools and did have multiple transcripts. So in order to get a transcript from your college, you have to go on your college's website and then send them to AAMC, which can take a while. And so right here, you're able to track those. I know, I think I had to send four transcripts since I took classes at four different schools. So it was really helpful to be able to see which ones they have received and they have not received. Also your letters of evaluation, you can see the status on those, which is helpful because then if one of your evaluators has not submitted it, you can contact them and ask them where they are in that process. So I was going to try to go through each of these sections and kind of show you what it looks like. However, I'm not able to do that. So I will just pull up my application from 2021 and kind of talk through everything that I did. Okay, so looking at my application from 2021, the first few pages are just kind of identifying information, such as your name, date of birth, all of your contact information that you need to make sure is accurate because this is how they will be contacting you with any questions. So just make sure all of your emails, phone numbers, anything like that is accurate. And then these are just some kind of yes or no questions asking you about your family, your language information. Um, these are also some things just about your parents and guardians and your siblings and anything like that. And then this is kind of where you get down into the nitty gritty of everything. So on this application, you have to put every single class that you have ever taken in college. So I went to four different schools and so I have a ton of different classes, a ton of different transcripts. So this is the part where personally I printed every single one of my transcripts and highlighted as I went in order to just stay organized and make sure that I did everything correctly. So the first thing you have to have is your school name, then your status when you took the class, the year you took the class, the term that you were in, the course class as is seen on your transcript, the course number, the course name, and the hours and grade that you received in that course. So I know that I, since I went to four different schools, I have four different transcripts. And so those classes have to match the specific transcript for that college you took the class at. So even though I went to LSU and those classes will show up on my South Alabama transcript, I need to make sure that those LSU classes match my LSU transcript. So this is the process that does take the longest time and does include any AP credits that you do have. So make sure that those are also in there. So as you can see, I went to four different colleges, as I just said, 
and this just takes forever to do. So make sure that this is all accurate because it will be checked with your transcripts thing. And then is where you get to the experience part. So the experience part is kind of where you talked about all the different things you've done throughout college, whether it be community service, working in a lab, or having an actual job. So here you can see that I made COVID masks and this was my meaningful experience. I think you're allowed to have three or four of those experiences. And if you do vote it as a meaningful experience, that just means that you're gonna talk about it a little more. And it was something that really spoke to you throughout the process and something that you want the college, the med schools that you're applying to know a little bit more about. So all of them, you will put a brief description as you can see on these. However, your meaningful experience, you will be more in depth and kind of show how this wanted to make you be a doctor. So for instance, I made COVID masks during the height of COVID which was something really meaningful to me because I was able to help people in my community by doing something that I love to do, which is sewing. So I put that as a meaningful experience. However, I did also work in a research lab. So I worked in two different labs and put those as two different things. You also put the date here and the total number of hours, which I estimated on all of them since I don't really have a complete log of it, but I did round um, on those. And then also any extracurricular. So I was a part of different clubs, different intramural sports, which can be seen here. Um, and for your shadowing, this is something that I was told by the med schools that I applied to that I could have been more um, detailed about. So on mine, I just put what doctors I shadowed as well as what um, type of doctor they were. However, the medical schools said that you want to be as detailed as you can here. So I did make it a meaningful experience. However, I only talked about one of the doctors I shadowed in this experience. So if I were to redo this, I would kind of talk about one high point from every doctor that I shadowed. And I know when I was going through the process of shadowing different people, I was told to kind of keep a log of what you did like and didn't like about the profession. And I think that'd be great to put here. So that the medical schools did see that you were shadowing and that you did learn something from each of these experiences. So these are just some more extracurriculars that I did. I did work as a sales associate at a small boutique in my hometown, and I have also worked for a doctor, so I put both of those on here. And you wanna put any contact information for these people that you do have in order for different med schools to reach out to them if they want to. And I also did volunteer, so you wanna make sure that you do put your volunteering on here because that's something that a lot of medical schools really look into. And then finally, the biggest thing that everyone hears about is your personal statement, which is something that I took a lot of pride in. And I also did work on this on a different document so that I can go back and edit it. And I did send it to a couple of different people so they could read it and just really make sure that this is something that shows you and your personality and why you want to be a doctor. I think on the application, all it says is just one line, why do you want to be a doctor? And so that was something that took me a few weeks to like mull over since you do have a, a few weeks to work on this application. I think this was the last part that I ended up filling out because I wanted to make sure that when any medical school read this application, they knew why I specifically wanted to be a doctor. So as you can see, my personal statement was very personal to me and I tied in my family a lot because that is something that is really important to me. And my dad has always been my number one role model. So I wanted to ensure that that was in here and that when any medical school was reading this, they felt a really personal connection to me and that I was speaking from my experiences. I know that it's really easy to get caught up in what everyone else is doing, but with my personal statement, I wanted to make sure that even if this medical school never got to talk to me, they would at least know some part of me and what makes me uniquely me. So mechanical engineering was something that was very important to me and I wanted to make sure that they knew why I chose that and that even though it is on my application in other parts, you don't really get to see why that person chose that. So this personal statement allows you to express yourself in a way that all of your med schools will see. Um, and finally, you can see your letters of evaluation and also where you plan to send your application. So I did apply to six different medical schools. As you can see, two of the medical schools in Louisiana 
um, MUSC in South Carolina, the University of Arkansas, the University of Mississippi, which is where I currently attend, and also the University of South Alabama. So I hope you all enjoyed going through my application. I, you can pause it at any point and kind of read what I wrote. I didn't want to read through all of it, especially my personal statement, because I think that was something that took me a lot of time and that you really need to put a lot of effort into. But good luck to everyone applying. I think applications, as I said earlier, are open today. But I know when I submitted mine, I took like a week before just so that they could work out any kinks with the website and everyone was just like mad dashing to put it in. But honestly, if you do it within the first week or two, all the med schools don't get them until June. So you should be fine, but definitely do it as quick as possible because you do want to be in that first read for all of the schools. But good luck to everyone. I'll also be doing one for DO school for the Acomas application because I did apply to both. So be on the lookout for that, but good luck everyone.